Hey everyone, welcome to another Asana training video and today I want to share and explore the new timeline feature with you. At the time of recording this, the timeline is a very new feature. It literally came out or was released yesterday, I think, so I've had a little bit of time to play with this and I wanted to share how to use this feature and a few of the ways that I've already started to use it to manage clients and within a Kanban board in my account. If you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to post any comments below. And if you want some one-on-one -on -one support with setting up or training your team on Asana, feel free to book a complimentary uh, introductory call with me and I can learn about what kind of help you need and I can talk you through support options as well. So into this video. So here we are, we're in a brand new project. I've actually just set up a new product launch project. This is just using one of the templates that comes standard in Asana. So this is what a typical project might look like. We can see a bunch of tasks that need to happen for this product launch. Now the really nice thing about the new timeline is it doesn't matter whether you set up a, a project as a list or as a board, you can toggle your project and switch from the list or the board to the new timeline, which is really nice. Obviously, you still do need to pick to set up your project as a list or a board in the first place. You can't switch between those, but whatever you choose, you can toggle the project and view it as a timeline, which is really nice. It gives you this very visual way of managing your projects. So here we are. There's a bunch of tasks down here. Now, none of these have due dates on them at the moment. And really, the way the timeline feature works is it's how the how the timeline is displayed is fully based on the start and due dates of a task. So if I take one of these, let's say this task and I drag it up here, I can say this is going to start on the 2nd and it's going to finish on the 6th of April. And if I click on that task now, we can see the, the start and end date has been set up here. I can drag a number of things up here and we can start to kind of plan the order in which we need to tackle these. And with these drag handles, I can change the duration of the task. So this one is now going to be set, uh, have a different start and end date. Um, so kind of planning your project is really nice and quick and easy. In fact, I think using the timeline, it's quicker to set up due dates than it is in the traditional list view. So that's a feature I really like. We can just drag as many tasks as we on here, as we want onto here. And let's say, you know, I'm dragging a task. This is not something that has a start and end date. Maybe it's just like a due date. Potentially, I could um, just have, have a date like this. There doesn't necessarily need to be a start date. And so you can see it kind of gets collapsed like that. I can customize my timeline a bit. I can zoom out if I want to sort of see, um, whoops, more months uh, in my in my timeline uh, or zoom back in. And you can toggle to show the um, Asana default or no color. So like if I had a tag on one of these, let's just throw a tag on quickly just so we can show what that looks like. Yeah, my internet connection is running a bit slow today. So let's throw a quick tag on here. Let's just, I have a five minute tag. Uh, so it doesn't really mean anything related to this, but you can see the uh, the task here inherits the color of that tag. And the same is true of custom fields as well. I think custom fields, from what I can tell, trump tags. So if you've got a custom field and a tag, I think the custom field is the color that's used. So here we are, we can start to plan out our project. And now I can actually click and drag. Let's say I need to move all of these tasks at once. I can actually push all of these back one week. This is a really nice feature. It's something that Asana users have been asking for for a while now is the ability to bulk edit the due dates on tasks. From what I can tell, this is probably now the quickest way to do that is to view your project in a timeline. And if you just click and drag and select, and then you pick up one of the tasks, you can click and drag and change a bunch of tasks really quickly. The other thing we can do here, let's say, let's move that to there. What I can do is create dependencies between some of these. Now this is a premium feature, but I can mark it as dependent on, what's that one? Right, right press release. So let's come up here, uh, mark as dependent on press release. So I can type the word press. And you see it creates this little arrow here to show that this one is kind of, this one is dependent on the press release and I can I can move that there. What I have noticed is, is that if you move the start date to before the end date of that, the arrow turns red to kind of show like, hey, this task that's dependent is actually starting before this one's done, so there's an issue. Now something I have noticed is even if I move this back, it actually does not affect the dependent task. I think that's probably a sign of just giving you the choice to have full control over how things show rather than saying just because that one goes back this one has to as well. I think Asana would rather give you the choice. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you do want to push both of them back you do need to select like I showed you before. 
So there we have it. Those are the key kind of features of getting started with the timeline. Let me show you a few of the ways that I'm using it in my account. If you've watched uh, many of my other previous videos, you might know that I have a Kanban board uh, style project. This is what I refer to as a summary project. So I actually don't create any tasks in here. What I do is I pull in tasks from other projects to summarize in here, like the key things that I've got planning in progress and, and, and so on. Now I can actually view this as a timeline um, and I can actually see how my project has played out. Now I actually need to do a bit more planning at this, uh, the point of recording this video so I actually haven't planned too much into the future at the moment. But you can see what this would look like anyway. You can see there's you know a, a task here that takes up nearly a month, there's a bunch of things happening here, new Facebook thing. Um, so it's just a very nice visual way of viewing your project. So when you're thinking about how do I use this, it's just a it's, it's part of that planning phase of, of project uh, project management as so you can see what order do we need to do things, when do things start and when do things end? How do we actually go about this project? Because when you're looking at just a list, it's sometimes not clear like what do we need to work on right now? And the timeline, the visual kind of um, just by laying it all out like this, it's very clear like what you should be focusing on right now. You can kind of see the green line here, this is today, anything kind of um, coming up to or on that green line is kind of the things you should be focusing on right now. So there's the Kanban board, I think that looks really nice and pretty, don't you? And you can see here the, the um, colors here, the task has inherited the colors of some of the other projects that it's on. So that's part of my products project, which is orange. These ones are part of my content pro uh, project, which are green. So that's why we've got a few different colors there. The other way that I'm using the uh, timeline is with my client. So let's flick to the timeline here. This is really nice. So I've actually gone back and literally put start and end dates for all the previous clients that I've worked on. So if I scroll up, I can literally go back in time looking at last year, like who did I work with? Um, what what was the length of these projects? So here are some small clients that, you know, it was just like one or two calls. These are some bigger projects that I was working on because obviously they take up more time. And it's nice, it's, it's really cool to be able to scroll back in time and see like, you know, about halfway through last year, this is kind of how, much, how many clients I was balancing. Whereas now if I click back to today, um, I can see kind of how my, my client, um, my client capacity or the number of clients I'm dealing with now has, has grown. So that's really nice. Where's my timeline gone? Oh, I'm up here. There we go. Now you can see as well with this particular project, the um, the colors are, are, the custom fields are being reflected by the colors here. So if I click on one of these, um, this is an hourly client. It's got the blue, blue custom field, which is why it's showing as blue here. Green for me is like active clients, blue is hourly. Yellow is like a client that's on hold right now. Uh, I've got red, which is a client in my 30 day support period, and the white ones are actually complete. Um, so that's, uh, ooh, I think that one, no, yeah, that one's complete, yeah. So the colors, yeah, the custom fields, I like how the custom fields get translated um, onto the timeline. Now I guess a few things to point out with this. Some of these clients that I'm working on right now, like I don't necessarily know when the project is going to end. So I've kind of, for now, I've extended them all out till the end of April. So I've kind of pushed them a month out. But in reality, I actually don't know when some of these projects are going to end. So what I will do is I will keep keep extending these projects out um, as I continue to work on the client. But what I will do is when the client project actually ends, I will adjust this bar to reflect how long I actually spent on the project. So from this point of view, it's really nice to be able to see, like I said, historically, how many clients have I worked with? Um, what was the duration of these projects? But it's also nice to be able to see some of these big bars up here that have been going on for a while I can kind of look at these and go, well, there's a couple here, these yellow ones that are on hold. These ones have been on hold for a while. Maybe there's something I can do to try and advance the project forward or maybe wrap up the client if I need to. But it's nice to be able to see the really big bars um, kind of stick out to me to show like, here's a client that you've been working with for a while. Um, is, is that the best? Is that accurate? Like, do you need to wrap this project up now? What can you do to move this project forward? Um, so I really like how, yeah, the, the, the length of the, the task or the client in this case kind of reflects how long I've been working with them. So there you are. I mean, that's, uh, those are some, that's how I'm managing clients. 
So that's a little look at the timeline feature, how I'm using it with clients, the Kanban board. Um, it's a really nice little feature. Obviously it's very new. There are some things I would really like the, the, the timeline to do, which it currently doesn't. Like I wish uh, an Instagant, for example, is a really great third party tool that plugs into Asana. And what you can do is you can click on a task and it will expand and show you all of the subtasks. That's something I really like that Instagant does that from what I've seen so far, Asana and the timeline here does not support that. That's a feature I'd really like is to be able to click on one of these tasks and see all of the subtasks underneath. So that's um, a little bit of a shame. But uh, like I said, this is a new feature. Hopefully Asana will be developing this and improving it very soon. So there you are. Thanks for watching this video. Like I said, if you have any questions about the timeline or anything about Asana, feel free to reach out. Or if you want that one-on-one -on -one support, feel free to book an introductory call with, with me as well. One more time, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.